there's a feeling of joy most definitely because I think there's one thing having a dream and then it's totally different turning that dream into reality which I think entrepreneurship is all about so there was joy but I also knew that I was very early on in the journey so there was still a lot of work to do so I think as an ambitious person as well, it's so easy to be focused on the next goal instead of reflecting and being happy with how far you've come. Mm -hmm. So I think at the time, now that I'm reflecting back, I don't think, I don't think I was, I was happy, don't get me wrong, but I was just thinking we need to get the batch, we need to launch, we need to, you know, there's so much hard work to do, we need to get the marketing right. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, before we move to the marketing, I'll try to understand also the kind of strategy that you put in place to get it out to the world. Because I, you didn't call me, I called you, know, because I, I saw what you are doing. You know? That is why I contacted <laughs> you for this interview, which means that yeah. somehow some things you have done, right? Put out the items of the marketing. But before we got there, uh, when you show to your, to your sister, what did she say? I mean, what was her reaction? So it's my niece. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> when you show, show your niece, sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Um, she was really, really happy. I think she just felt like my auntie has made a doll just for me. <laughs> um, yeah, I think she was really happy. And because she was only five, I don't think she realised how powerful her telling me she did not want to be black made me feel I think she just she just saw it like it was a throwaway comment and that there was going to be nothing done of it but that comment definitely stuck in my head and once I showed her the doll I think she knew how special she is that just from her voicing how she felt it's now made her auntie create a business and that's good and that's great and I, and I think that is what uh, entrepreneurs do in most of the cases, you know, in that you look at the, the, the world around you, you look at your society, uh, you see a problem, you try to prefer solution to the problem, you know, in terms of maybe <laughs> creating a cause or creating a product, or I don't know, but you definitely provide a solution to that problem. And, and I find that to be very interesting, you know. <laughs> uh, okay, now let's look at about the marketing, like I was saying before. How do you, because you have not yet launched it, you, know, you are planning for the launch, how do you intend to go about the marketing? Because I think it's really interesting what you're doing you know, for the message behind it. So how do you intend to go about it so that more people can hear of what you're doing? Well, when I initially had the idea, we didn't just want to make a black doll because the world that we live in, race does make people feel uncomfortable especially if they don't have to go through the problems that certain races do go through they'd rather just ignore those problems if it doesn't affect them so I wanted to go down the road of being inclusive I wanted a white girl to be able to play with my black doll a black doll to be able, a black girl to be able to play with the Muslim doll I wanted it to reflect the society that we live in so that's why we decided to do four dolls instead of one and make them best friends and have them be all different cultures and then also throw in that they travel around the world and then also throw in that when they travel around the world they meet inspiring women from all different colors all different areas of the world and I feel like I had to strip back the different layers of the brand and join them all up together, which I think was the best thing to do because now when people speak about Inspira doll, it's not a black doll they speak about, they speak about best friends that travel the world together. And that happens in any community. Hmm, so. That is very, very inspiring. I think it's, it's right. It's Payari Do. Yeah. <laughs> the word really make a lot of sense now. <laughs> so mm -hmm. tell me, what is his reaction of the people around you? Um, surprisingly, a lot of the people who like the concept are white. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
they're white. I think they feel included, even though we are launching with the black doll first. They they are looking at this little black doll like she's representing a girl who just wants to feel beautiful and wants to travel with her friends. And any little girl can relate to that. So I think with my dolls, you strip back the race and you concentrate on their character. You concentrate on the storyline, which I didn't, I, I didn't realise at the time that it would make people feel comfortable with the brand. They, they feel like the brand is approachable. They feel like they can come and ask questions about race and about, you know, things that they don't understand because that barrier is down. It's like that we bridged the gap between cultures. So when they want to ask questions, it's informative. They don't feel like, you know, should I not say this? Does this make me racist? Do you know, you know, white people sometimes they don't want to say things what they're thinking because they have to be politically correct or, you know, they don't want to get into trouble by the things that they say. But with this brand, because yes, it is centered around race. It also is centered around education and geography and fun. So it makes people less afraid to ask questions. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate our review Obehead podcast and share with your friends who might need it. I remain Obehead Ewafo. Thank you so much for listening and talk to you in the next episode.